nous fasse sentir que Seigneur, que nos oreilles, Seigneur, fait que le service soit agréable à nous, Seigneur. Ok, Seigneur, c'est temps que nous venons d'asseoir, Seigneur, mais avec toute sincérité de cœur, Seigneur, nous demandons, Seigneur, pour faire adoration, ça, Seigneur, et pour utiliser le moment, ça, Seigneur, pour parler avec le To use this hour, Lord God, to speak a word that is fit for the moment, right for this moment, Lord Jesus. Use me as an instrument, as a vessel, Lord God, to feed your people, especially those who have lost their ways. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Maranatha, peace, Lord again. Jesus is coming back. We know that. I wonder if you know that. Amen. And before we leave here today, I will hope to have shown you the importance of understanding what that means when Jesus is coming back. And to say, I'm going 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 to say, and I'm going to We find Paul, uh, who's addressing the church of Thessalonians. And so far, since I leave to let Lao Tao work here, Paul n'est pas tellement gay en pile bagay négatif pour dire contre l'église de Thessalonique. Il est simplement te encourager ou te dire que te concerné de yo parce que te planté l'église là ou moins te aider à planter l'église là et te voyer Timothée, il s'est Timothée de go check on things. We all know when you plant something, you want to find out if it's still doing good. And if you read Thessalonians, in a lot of ways, that's the, the tone that Paul starts off with. He's, He's asking them, are they okay? He's letting them know that, hey, I've heard some good news. You guys are still keeping going. You guys are still jumping. You guys have been backslide. And then he gets to chapter four, which is a passage that we have today. Now, chapter four, là, où est que c'est là qu'il réellement dans ses premières exhortations. Dans tout commencement, c'est quelque part d'encouragement. Il t'a dit quand j'en ai pensé avec eux, si on t'a dit que tout va ok, va ça, c'est bien ça. But then in chapter 4, he gives a repetitive exhortation for the Thessalonians, for the Thessalonians, he gives a lot of attention. Why would Paul have to remind them, and out of everything he could have said, and if you read the Bible, different letters have different tones. Get a little bit of the word, Paul would call it. Get a little bit of the word, pour exhorter, regarder l'église, c'est juste une lettre générale. Mais pour qui ça là, il vient nous répéter à peur ça qui dit que nous bien commencé, nous content que tout va bien, ok. Mais il vient répéter, il déclare que la volonté de Dieu c'est ça, notre sanctification. Et puis il dit that we may abstain from sexual immorality. Why the Paul focused on that particular sin as one of his first exhortations, and he said, "This is the will. Ça c'est volonté, mon Dieu, que vous fuyez, pour que vous absteniez de dire ça, le limonade sexuel." And that lets us know a little context of the world of Thessalonians. Thessalonians was as a lot of other places, an idolatrous place. Y'a un côté que y'a un pile impudicité, y'a un pile asexuel, y'a un pile idole. Mouna fait un pile bagaille contre le nom de le vrai Dieu Jésus et notre Père. Et Paul dit, ou même qu'à vivre dans la culture ça, bon nous fait nous songer encore. You who are living in a world that has sex, and idolatry all over it. You guys are doing good, but let me remind you one more time that the will of God is your sanctification. And then he specifies that you abstain from sexual immorality. Churches, churches don't like to talk too much about the topic of sex, and there is a certain grace that you have to talk about it when you're doing with a big crowd. But there has been very few sins that has offended God more than sexual immorality. Again, there is no other sin that has offended God more than sexual immorality. And I have found it unjust to be able to say that everyone is exhorted, especially our young people, 
qu'à goûter avec une culture qui peut-être fait ressemblance that looks like Thessalonians. This culture, what am I talking about? Well, let's, let's look at how far we've come at the culture that is around us. And I know that there's a lot of statistics and not every statistic will be uh, always accurate, but I think statistics can at least show us an idea of what is going on. I think, I think that statistics can show us at least an idea of what is going on. And so, in 1960, in 1960, people who thought that there was nothing wrong with fornication or sexual immorality, back in the 1960s, in this country, the percentage was only 29. 20, well, for us Christians, that's a lot. But considering 29% of the people in 1960, you say that we don't know anything about But flash forward to 2010, and imagine who is the percentage of the people who say that we don't know anything about the sexual sexuality. It went from 29% in 1970 to 55% of the average American does not see anything wrong with fornication. That's the culture we live in. 55% of the people who are not in mal avec ça, Paul just said that he had the volunteer of God, the sanctification, to assume the immorality sexual. In 1960, the percentage of babies out of wedlock was 5%. But in 2012, according to this stat, maybe there's other research, it says the percentage shot up to 56%. No, I'm sorry, 40% out of wedlock. Pity qui fait en Et nous pas même commencer à parler de ça que nous avons sur la télévision. Nous pas même commencer à parler de ça que nous avons sur la radio. Nous ne sommes pas allés là. Mais je veux juste peindre la situation qui était similaire à la Church of Thessalonians. Et de voir, especially as youth, c'est la culture sexuelle crazy culture que nous vivons. That 55, over half of you guys in here, according to stats, won't even see anything wrong with fornicating. So what does that make a church to do, a preacher to do? Si nous parlons quicker, son péché. Mais Paul dit, la volonté de bon Dieu, qui ça? C'est notre sanctification. Qui ça, sanctification? Alors, il y a un peu de monde qui te garde sur sanctification, mais bien simple. Sanctification, c'est le processus là pour venir saint devant Dieu. The process of making something holy. That's what sanctification is. You are setting yourself apart. You are making yourself a special possession. Ou mettez tête tout à part. Ou mettez tête tout ton combat qui saint devant mon Dieu. Et processus ça, vous voyez, sanctification. Et image, une image sanctification, c'est les enfants d'Israël. Bon, je finis de délivrer en Égypte. Il dit, on va le mettre en un côté. Mais là, on finit de délivrer en Égypte. Qui peut y entrer Dans le désert. Eh bien, histoire Israël dans le désert, s'il si le faut, on met dit ça son image de sanctification. Processus peuple bon Dieu, processus chrétien bon Dieu, pour déployer de tout pareil qui de Égypte dans l'île, pour préparer 